Hello, I'm Tammy Gingro. Welcome to my Body and Balance channel. Today we're going to be, I'm sharing with you, a ancient Egyptian Celtic cross reading encompassing the energy of the Lion's Gate portal, which is currently open in full alignment, the earth, the sun, the star Sirius and Orion. And it is an amazing time where the universe is listening and conspiring to deliver what we ask for. If you are not in the habit of paying attention to the Lionsgate portal this year, you will want to pay attention. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> this reading is also very much about the energy of the new moon in Leo, which falls square in the middle of this Lionsgate portal, which is at its peak on 8-8-2024, which this year is a triple eight because 2,824 equals eight. So we have an 888 energy on the 88 Lions Gate. And um, wow, is August ever a super powered month for manifesting? And you may or may not know that I uh, host a new moon global goddess gathering each and every new moon. And if you are in Southwestern Pennsylvania or wanna travel to Southwestern Pennsylvania, you are very welcome to join us um over the weekend of august 4th this coming weekend and then in the pittsburgh area we will have an 88 stargate gathering so uh without further ado let's jump into the celtic cross well i do want to talk a little bit about the energy so we have venus currently in leo she will be conjunct the sun and moon which are uh together at 13 degrees of leo which by the way, 13 is the number of Venus. Venus will be at 29 degrees. So the anoretic degree, there's been so much energy surrounding 29 degrees. It's an intensity. It's an ending before they move into a new sign. This month to me really represents fast moving energies. Venus will be moving out of Leo and into Virgo soon after the new moon. And Mercury, the planet Mercury, will begin its retrograde phase on the new moon. So this is going to be like an energetic retraction. I will tell you, this is my second take on this video. I actually created one, uploaded it to YouTube. I don't know what happened. I went into a time warp. It was like an hour and 40 minutes. And this morning I woke up and I was like, I have to re-record re that video. And that is going to be the energy of this particular retrograde period. And um, just August in general, if you ask me, we're going to be asked to reflect, review, connect the dots, and be very, very, very clear. So the reading, the cards in this reading have blown me away, which is why I think I went on for an hour and 40 minutes first time around. So without further ado, the Celtic Cross is a 10-card reading. Today, we will also be including the bottom of the deck, making it a 12-card, uh, sorry, 11-card reading. And then I have a, uh, a Anubis Oracle card as well, which is uh, so beautiful. So the card in the first position, which represents the basic energy of the Lionsgate portal and the new moon. If this were a personal reading, this would represent, um, it's still the basic energy of the reading. So we have in this position, the moon, which is a mysterious and ethereal, even sometimes foreboding energy. If you are afraid of looking into your own shadow, into your own dark side, the light, the dark, no difference. We can no longer be afraid of what we might discover by shadow diving, shadow dancing. My whole transformational life and thus professional practice as a transformational life coach is about mining your shadows for the alchemical gold that they are. But you see here these two figures that look very much like Anubis in 
in Egypt, Anubis is the guide that goes with you on your shamanic initiations, in your time in the underworld, which we have Venus is so prevalent this month. The beautiful planet of Venus, she has just emerged from her superior conjunction with the sun, her time in the underworld. She was there for three months, basically infusing the sun with all that she's been through already, having squared Pluto earlier this year, having gone through the Pluto Kazemi, transforming the divine feminine Venus herself. And she's now infused that energy, her energy into our sun. She's just reappeared in the western sky before the sun goes down as the evening star. And um, the energy of this reading is far reaching. These are timeless readings, but this energy is taking us through to the end of the year, certainly through the remainder of the Pluto retrograde, coming back again over that 29th degree Capricorn and the United States Pluto return. So, this card represents the sign of Pisces. We currently have Saturn in Pisces, and it's a prevalent player in the Lion's Gate and the New Moon, as Saturn is squaring Jupiter. It's the first square, and this is really, really important because you may remember the great conjunction, the Saturn-Jupiter conjunction. The once every 200, sorry, once every 2,000 odd years where they are visible to us. It happens far more frequently, but it isn't always visible. I personally believe that the star that the wise men saw that led them to Jesus was not a star, but a Saturn-Jupiter conjunction just a theory. And it's going to revisit that energy as well. So the first square after a major conjunction like that is asking us to take another look, to check our progress. And um, so this is also the last sign in the zodiac. So this reading is greatly foretelling. We've known that we're at the end of the age of Pisces and the beginning of the age of Aquarius or the new aeon of Horus. Many of us star seeds and light workers are way showers walking across the bridge and through the golden doorway to new earth, which already exists in another dimension. But this whole reading is really foretelling of a powerful new beginning. And, um, so also this card represents the last stage of winter as Pisces is the last sign in the Zodiac, the ending of spring, and then we come to the Aries equinox and springtime, which is always every ending is a new beginning. But this is a major cycle, really closing out. And Crowley called this the gateway to resurrection. So you can see you're asked to walk through these foreboding characters. Also, do you see here the yoni? You're going to see that this reading is almost entirely feminine energy. And Mother God, Divine Mother God is really seeding herself and beginning now to sprout. And we are asked to protect that new growth like a mother protects her newborn, like you protect a grand new idea that you're looking to launch into the world. Um, in the Kabbalah, this is the letter Kof. I may be pronouncing that wrong, but it's Q-O-P-H. And that really represents the back of the head, the cerebellum, which it controls our balance. Um, I take notes, you may or may not know. I draw these cards, I meditate on them, I take notes so that I stay on track and I don't forget important uh, points that I wanna bring up. So we see here at the bottom, we already talked about how every ending is a new beginning. We see Kephra, the dung beetle, the ancient Egyptian 
protector god who spins the earth in her uh, tentacles, legs, whatever they are, protecting us from the energies that are coming in. And we see here that once we go through this portal, once again, diving into our shadows, this looks like a yoni, I was going to say. It very much represents a yoni energy. We even see a stream of blood and nine drops of blood flowing through, representing regeneration, the dawn of a new day, as Capra is holding the sun in her tentacles. Each and every day, we have a new beginning with the resurrection of the sun. This card also represents midnight. And the new moon is the darkest night. I am intending to sleep outside this new moon. And I invite you to do the same. It's extra important now that we connect with our earth and we connect with our stars. The stars will communicate with us regardless. But when you go out and gaze upon them, they will upgrade, recapitulate. You will feel it. Sometimes you will hear your clairs can open up in all the ways. Clair audience, hearing, clairvoyance, seeing, clair sentience. That just knowing that we know that we know. That's clair cognizance, knowing that we know that we know. Clair sentience is the feeling. I just feel it in my gut. And clair cognizance, I'm sorry, clair omniscience is that. Um, higher self, the just knowing of your higher self, the connection to your higher self. So Kafra protects us through cycles of change. And we are indeed in a great cycle of change right now. Um, sorry, I'm consulting my notes as I have not looked at them yet. Um, so this is about dissolving illusion. I had a, a theory about that. Illusion. Sorry, I've totally lost my train of thought on that, but it's about dissolving illusion, burning off karma. It'll come up. It's dissolution. Dissolution is what happens in rebirthing, as I see it, as we go back into the cosmic womb dissolution, D-I-S, solution, S-O-L-U-S-I-O-N, and dissolution, um, dissolving willingly into a rebirthing cycle. It, it's just a play on those words. I, <laughs> I hope that my stumbling didn't make it any less clear for you, but we're able, again, continuing in this consciously stepping off the karmic wheel or burning off karma consciously choosing what we are ready to let go of once for all. And I really believe when we do the deep healing work for ourselves, we impact the collective in greater ways than you could ever imagine. And um, we're at the threshold of new levels of consciousness, just waiting for us to raise our vibrational frequency to match these higher levels of consciousness that have been streaming into us through the solar flares, through just more and more light streaming onto our planet, upgrading, up-leveling, up-shifting. I see this as our future selves calling us forward. So I invite you to get still, Call to have a conversation or a meeting with your future, your future, future self. And you can do this uh, just by having a meditation and setting the intention to do so. So all of these questions, there are many questions with each card. They are um, self-analyzing meditative questions and affirmations. And I've created a Lionsgate New Moon um, contemplative meditation guide, which you can, um, you will get for free if you're all, it's for free for everybody, but you get it automatically if you're on our email list. And if not, um, you can download it just by signing up for our emails. And it's perfect for using through this Lionsgate portal to help you get really clear 
on what it is that you're asking the universe for. And it also gives you a meditation that you can use. And it's great for groups as well. So ask yourself, what inner regions feel unknown to me? What are your blind spots? What experiences are you most afraid of? And the affirmation, it's always darkest just before dawn. The next card might very well be my favorite card in the deck, the Princess of Wands. She is the earthy aspect of fire, or if you think of it in that way, she's the fuel of fire itself. She represents being freed from fear. You see, the tiger of fear no longer assuages her. She's conquered this tiger of fear, and she is swinging him around by her tail. Um, this card represents, again, new beginnings, optimism, increased perception that comes from being willing to have that dark night of the soul and to no longer be afraid of it. There is nothing you or I can find in our shadow that we are not fully capable of embracing lovingly. There is not one thing in this life or another that you must carry shame or any negative emotions towards. It is high time we go into our shadow being our own torchlight illuminating everything that is yet to be integrated for our greatest good. Um, it's time to experience everything, to feel it and move through it, to no longer suppress our emotions or be afraid of how something's going to make us feel. Feel the feels, move through them to the freedom that's on the other side. The Princess of Wands represents the virgin priestess dancing in the fires of spring. And she's extremely individual, brilliant, and daring. Having conquered her fear, she is naked, open, unprotected. What, here's a question. What would your life look like when you are freed from the fears that have held you back? Reflect now on your greatest strengths. Perhaps pause the video for these questions right now, or get the guide and, and do it later. So the, um, the court cards, and there are 12, and they are related to our zodiac signs. So when I do a personal reading for you, I get your birth date to find your significator card. And they represent an I Ching, which is the ancient Chinese divination. I use the mothering change version there are many, many, many translations, but that is by far my favorite. So now we're going to talk about the 27th hexagram. What is the next step in my life? That's what this, um, what this I Ching asks us. As I accept my fear, here's an affirmation already. As I usually I save them for the end, but this was so important. I plucked it in here. As I accept my fear, I transform it into love. So fear being possibly the lowest vibrational energy, we now are supported to easily transform our lowest vibrational fear into the highest vibrational energy, love. We are being gifted primal powers of realization. The act of becoming fully aware of ourself. Um, your own power, the fulfillment or achievement of something. This moon is really asking us to birth something. Quite possibly, it could be a dream that you've abandoned. It could be a project that wasn't right for you at some time, but now you're going to get all the support you need. Um, another question for you, what does it mean? to be a fully realized spirit-filled human. We are spirit having a human experience, moving into fifth dimension and higher realms, higher dimensions, 
is inviting for the first time in human her story, us to be fully aware, awakened individuals, our spirit in the driver's seat, not the mind, not the ego, spirit filled human beings. She represents encountering a force that clears away, stag clears away stagnation and arouses new growth. She opens the channels, Lionsgate portal. We have an open channel to let the energy flow freely, no longer blocking with our fear, no longer holding on to what is already past. How about every system, every modern system? Please don't cling to these old, worn out systems. It's time to just let them go. The new is already created in another dimension. We don't have to fear how will we govern ourselves in the new aeon. It's being done consciously, without top-down authority, without terrorism and fear-based control. I can't read my word here. Um, contemplate nourishment deeply. Contemplate nourishment deeply. What you eat, drink, think, speak. Begin to think outside the box in broader perspectives with everything. But how are you nourishing yourself? The sages nourish what is excellent and extend it to others. Eliminate corrupt patterns. Accepting the shock of enlightenment reveals patterns that mark real endings and new beginnings. And we have the power, we are empowered to spread abundance to all. When we stop blocking the natural flow, humans are meant to be in joy. Our birthright is divine abundance. And when we have a capitalist excess, we have um, limitless abundance to share. There will be no hunger. Imagine that. No hunger. No orphans going to bed without someone to tell them they love them. So the spirit of the tiger in the I Ching, and we see here depicted, she's conquered that tiger of fear. In the I Ching, the spirit of tiger eats away all that is corrupted. We must understand what is past in order to nourish our future. This is why it's really important to look back to the ancient ways of being, to honor our ancestors and look to the ancient ways before we go forward into the new aeon. Moving forward beyond corruption, the end of his story the patriarchy, the false masculine, and move into divine mother being openly seated in the heart mind of all of us star seeds, the benevolent queen being back on the throne, ending the separation. Um, our divine mother in our spirit nourishes us with heaven. Heaven is not meant for a select few after death. We are meant to be experiencing heaven on earth, experiencing joy in our elemental bodies. When we nourish our ancestors, they in turn nourish and ennoble us, ennoble us. We all have an inheritance and it is time that we accept it and receive it. So ask yourself, how can I change the ways I think? and find a new approach? How can I broaden my perspectives and use my creative potential? How can I develop the capacity to nourish my emotional and spiritual needs, both personally and collectively? And how can we begin to collectively focus on the fundamental needs of all humans to provide a foundation for general well-being? Can we find a balance that provides for the development of wider possibilities 
making the best use of existing resources? And how can we evaluate our resources in broader ways? Remember, all of these questions are available in the description box below if you're on YouTube, in the um, link uh, in our bio, if you're on Instagram. And what if we take chances on the new? And the affirmation, my greatest strength is fill in the blank. I transform my fear into love. Bringing us to our third card, which represents our conscious thoughts. And we have here the three of cups, which is just absolutely beautiful. This card is Mercury and Cancer. Remember, we have Mercury stationing retrograde on the day of the new moon. Um, this card is abundance. It also represents Persephone, one of the um, articulations or archetypes of the goddess like Venus, who goes into the underworld, who um, is the, the queen of the underworld. She represents, Mercury represents the will and the word of the all father in particular in the feminine sign of cancer um in the most receptive of signs cancer on the great sea of bina she represents both the moon and saturn feminine and masculine being seen both here together harmoniously and you see that the cups are golden cups of pomegranate, the rare and delicious fruit. And they're overflowing this rare and uncommon love, the exchange of love, giving and receiving, um, pure and unconditional. So with this thought of turning our fear into love and being pure, unconditional love, I'm going to invite you to close your eyes and think of a person or an archetype that brings up an energetic charge for you that may cause you to feel judgment, even hatred. Maybe it's someone who has abused you, been cruel, rejected, or abandoned you. Maybe it's an archetype. For me, I have a hard time with park rangers uh, or, or police abusing their authority and harassing and extorting. And I want you now to bring this person into your mind's eye. Look into their eyes, their face, their heart. See yourself in them and take on the task of loving them unconditionally. From your heart of hearts, offer them love now and feel the empowerment. Do you feel a release? Do you feel a weight lifted? Did you feel a surge of energy in your own heart? Freedom, empowerment. This is the only answer to ending violence, war, injustice, and restoring heaven on earth for all of us. Dear one, you have something exquisite to share that only you can share with society. Let's choose to make love the highest order freely available to all. Love of the highest order. Love of the highest order freely available to all. Ask yourself, who are the people toward I have not <laughs> my words who are the people toward whom I have not expressed love today here's your affirmation today gives me everything I need to be happy and whole this brings us to the fourth card our unconscious thoughts where we have the empress she is the highest order of the feminine in all her forms. She is the planet Venus, who again is conjunct to the sun and moon 
in this new moon, just meditate on the beauty of this card and the symbolism here. She commands the feminine in all her forms. Venus, as we already talked about, is just now visible in the night sky. We are indeed being asked to consciously rebirth ourselves with our divine mother earth. I'm beginning to see that this is how we transcend to new earth. It's the first time in her story that humans and the earth are rebirthing together and stepping into the new earth, new aeon of forest that already exists. We've all been asked, nudged to rebirth ourselves in the recent decades. Remember, the Saturn Jupiter square is taking us back to 2021 when we were still in the height of pandemic global retreat energy, um, where we were all being asked to rebirth ourselves, forced to retreat. I thought that it was a great gift where people that couldn't normally afford to take time off for a retreat were in many cases given money and time off and be asked to re-examine and rebirth. So if you were able to see through the narratives, or at least now in hindsight, see through the nefarious narratives and now do a conscious rebirthing um, in our current position. So can you drop in to this new earth energy? See and feel people living in harmony with one another and our planet. We are being supported and with increased light um, from the great central sun all over our galaxies. And we must heed the call to become the light and cross together the golden bridge and go through the golden doorway. Deleth is the Hebrew letter in the Kabbalah, the tree of life, which means literally door. Um, we must enter the doorway to new earth now. And when we are a match for that frequency, we are already there. This is, uh, this, this card actually represents, Venus actually represents, Venus is the only planetary symbol which comprises the entire tree of life and all of the planetary symbols. And she takes us from Chokma to Bina, which we had Bina in the Three of Cups uniting the mother again with the father, ending the long period of separation on our planet. She represents um, the fundamental formula that our universe is love. She represents beauty, love, motherliness, feminine wisdom, connection between spirit and matter. Um, fully realized, spirit-filled human, inner and outer wealth, wholeness and well-being. She is the reconciliation of opposites. She's the lover and the mother, the ruler and the seer. And her strength is in unifying the highest spiritual values with the lowest material forms. Collectively, we've been involving, we've been evolving and unfolding our femininity. And now we're called to the next higher octave of that feminine balance being restored. So please meditate on, um, can you think of a, a woman, a strong, wise woman who you can go to for support and write the qualities that you believe are of the utmost feminine and then integrate those qualities. So when we're able to see ourselves and have true, authentic, unconditional love for ourselves and that exercise where we worked on releasing anyone that we're holding anger or judgment and we give them unconditional love, the result is being freed from our fears, complete 
freedom. So, the affirmation, ask yourself, well, ask, the question for you was, is there a strong woman who you can learn from? And your affirmation is, I am filled with power and beauty. And this brings us now to the fifth card, which is past influences. And we have here another favorite of mine, the Aeon. Crowley, Alistair Crowley, this is his Tehote Tarot and these images. So amazingly, watercolor paintings by Frida Harris, Lady Frida Harris. I have a bucket list dream to see the original paintings. Uh, the color that she obtains with water is amazing. So Crowley renamed several of the cards from traditional Tarot. And this one, I believe, shows his great wisdom. If we do not eliminate judgment, card number 20 would have been judgment. Now it's the new aeon. We cannot go into the new aeon entertaining any form of judgment or injustice. So this card um sorry, 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 let's see, represents authentic revelation. Not the fire and brimstone taught in the Bible, but that revelation that we already talked about with the moon, that self-revelation. Um, releasing judgment. So there is no need for us to cling to that which has naturally passed away. Every ending is a new beginning. There's nothing to fear. It's not death and destruction, hell and brimstone. It's the new earth, new life. We see here the star, the ancient star goddess Nuit or Nuit, Nuit, and she's arching herself over. She actually creates the blanket for the stars in the night sky. And we see her mate, Hadith, shown down here as a winged ball of eternal energy. They create together the new dual solar god Horus, the lord and queen of the sun. Horus, original name is Haru Raha, the lord and queen of the sun. I am the lord and queen of the sun, here to share light, life, liberty, and love for the purpose of the complete emancipation of the human race. Um, we are being challenged to release our worm's eye view and see things from a broader perspective, recognizing that there are greater aeons and time spans at work. Time is not only lineal. We're being challenged and asked to shatter the illusion of time and even understand, uh, re release the need to understand and evaluate with our intellect and drop in to the intuition of our clairs. You see the shadowy figure behind Horus. To me, that is re representing our higher self. And you can see here, how do we fit this big expansive spirit into this small constricted human form? We need a little magic. Good thing, we're all magical beings. Meditate. One sign of ignorance is to believe in some form of injustice or unhappiness. And your um, affirmation, the great mystery, God, goddess is inside of me. Entering the doorway in my own heart is the key to this realization, self-realization and revelation. Bringing us to the next card, the energy moving us forward. Again, very feminine. We have here the Queen of Swords. She rules from the 21st degree of Virgo to the 20th degree of Libra, which I find fascinating because Venus will be at 29 degrees during the new moon. And then she very soon after moves into the sign of Virgo. And 
She will be in Libra before the end of August. We've got fast moving energy in August. She represents the watery part of air, the mist, the fog, the zero point void. She's enthroned on a throne of clouds, bare breasted. She, she appears to me to be just satiated. She holds in her left hand a sword and in her right hand, the freshly severed head of a bearded man. This, to me, truly represents the end of the patriarchy and the false masculine ruling. She's crowned by the head of a child in sharp rays of light. She represents the clear, conscious perception of idea. She is the liberator of the mind. In yoga, the second sutra, Yoga, Chitta, Vritti, Nirodha. Let us cease the fluctuations of the mind. The mind thought to be the greatest enemy of man. In the I Ching, I love the progression here. She's the 28th hexagram. And we have the Princess of Wands as the 27th hexagram. I write in my Mothering Change book, the last to each time that they come up in a reading. She hasn't come up in one of these readings, one of these collective readings since 2-22-2022. I had to find that significant. Um, she the, the I Ching is Da Guo, or Great Transition, Great Traverse. It's advantageous to have a direction to go, to get clear on what it is you want to ask the universe for during this Lionsgate portal. We are at a critical passage, a moment of truth. Ask yourself, can I accept truth soberly? Do we need to fear and panic in the time of great change? Powerful soul, you chose to be here during the greatest transition in human her story. It is time to rise up. Step out of denial into what you know in your heart to be truth. Can we step out of conventional ideas and norms? An affirmation, I stand alone having conquered fear. I stand alone without fear. Remember this card, uh, remember the card in the second position, which I just showed you. I took that note to, to go to that. Now remember, the channels are open. We're in this Lionsgate portal. Be aware of adherence to old values under pressure. The powers that never should have been are adding pressure right now to terrify us into keeping them alive. When we stop paying attention to them, they lose their power over us. A, another um, affirmation, implement, I implement my own highest values and stand strong in them. We are at a crisis and a critical passage. It's time to gather your strength, to hold on to your own ideals, to break the rules, dear one. Free yourself from stereotypes, conventions and corrupt institutions. Another affirmation, this is the time to emerge as a true individual. The inspiring force of the energy of this I Ching is the dragon. And remember, we're midway through the Chinese year of the wood dragon. I will create another video on an amazing journey that I recently had, amazing shamanic journey with dragon, which wove together dragon experiences, interactions that I had in Teotihuacan and the sacred pyramids there and in the middle of the Atlantic, cities of light deep in the Atlantic Ocean and um, and what dragon is bringing forth for us now, dragon light language. We're being supported by so many right now. Do you know that we have um, legions on the other side. We're the ones here in the physical during this time, 
we have so much invisible support from angelic realms, dragons, earth elementals, angels, archangels, galactic beings, benevolent galactic beings. It's time to call forth your team. Uh, stand on your own two feet. Do not listen to conventional, patriarchal, old paradigm thinking. And this will bring power from within, which is the direct de definition of empowerment. If you're sit here's a good one. If your situation does not nourish you, push it over and leave. This could be a relationship, a job that's preventing you from fulfilling your soul's purpose for being and keeping you in a state of drudgery. We are meant to be in joy. This is a very important time. It's up to you and me to articulate the new world for all of us. Do not focus on establishing your own dwelling. This is all from the I Ching, from Mothering Change. We need community. We're being called back to living in community. Um, I have an organization called Reimagine Fayette County, where we're, the premise is to reimagine Earth one community at a time. I'm going to link to it. You can get involved no matter where you are in the world and begin to create regenerative communities all over our planet. Imagine co-creating, brainstorming, sh and, and creating shared wealth consciously, letting go of fear, competition, and scarcity. Remember, dear soul, the natural condition of the human being is joy. This great transition is like a dialogue between structures that support and constrain. It's time to evaluate and choose only those structures that support. It's about becoming a true individual, free from social conventions. A transition or initiation is in progress. So we've been taught to fear, ritual, ceremony, initiation, but there are many initiations. A noble child becoming a warrior, a marriage. Um, a rit we're at the time of a ritual passage through liminal space, structural dissolution, dissolving, and a reordering of fundamental principles. This may very well be a matter of life and death. We are urgently called to let go of the past and do perhaps consider doing a ritual on the new moon. I host a hybrid event in person in Champion, Pennsylvania, and also via Zoom. And we're going to really contemplate what we're letting go of and do a fire ceremony. We're crossing a threshold, crossing a threshold. Find the power to exist free of conventional norm. It exists. We only need to reclaim our power. Decisively parting from old patterns. They could be belief systems, um, habits, destructive habits, it's time to really think about how we're nourishing ourselves. Remember, um, it's time to do a cleanse. I have the 60-day ultimate cleanse and renew where you can do it on your own or you can be coached and supported through a 60-day cleanse. And in 120 days using the system, you will rebuild your blood. It's time to step off the karmic wheel, recapitulate, reinterpret, repeat an old revolutionary process and give life a whole new meaning. Allow emerging new patterns to move you. This is flow, dear one. Be open in the channel of the new energies coming onto our planets. Be in flow. Break free from being a drone in drudgery and bring new meaning and energy to your life centering on initiation and connection with your higher self. Make radical changes by returning to ancient ways. A true engine of change finds the courage to stand for what you know is right, your authentic truth, 
Cut through old masks, peel them away. Your affirmation, my only duty in life is to remain true to myself. Bringing us to the fifth card, the five of wands strike. These next four, this represents you and I. If it were a personal reading, it would be you, but this is our collective energy right now. These next four cards I see as a dance between what could be seen as a challenging energy and then the answer. What happens when you let go of the fear and step forth? So this is purely active force. It represents Saturn and Leo. Of course, we have the sun in Leo right now. And Leo is elemental fire at its strongest force. Saturn tends to weigh it down. We sometimes think of Saturn as lead. We're on the heels of the Mars-Uranus conjunction and just entering the Saturn-Jupiter square, which is bringing us back to that energy again of the great Saturn-Jupiter conjunction. Question, ask yourself, what unfulfilled desires are hiding under the surface of my conscious awareness? This card indicates, indicates that the creative head of the lion, Lion's Gate portal, is blocked. And as we enter this Lion's Gate portal, it is absolutely urgent that we get clear on our desires, our wishes, our goals, our trajectory as a human race what we intend and ask the universe for during this time will be granted. Do not allow your life to be a burden. Do not resign yourself to settle for less than or to remain in a state of overwhelm. Let go of the past, release your burdens to the universe. It'll be taken away once for all. Walk away from all that no longer serves, including old patterns, beliefs, and behaviors. Ask yourself, what seem to be insurmountable obstacles standing between me and my goals, the realization of my goals? Affirmations, step by step, I make real progress towards my goals. I am clear, confident, and worthy. I am more and more capable of expressing my feelings and my creativity. The six of discs, success. This is the energy coming to us from the outside world. When we implement these ideals, we are guaranteed success. This is Tifereth on the tree of life. The number six is always um, the establishment of the energy of the element, in this case, the earth element, material success. This represents the moon in Taurus. External manifestation of the inner equals success, which is why it's so important to go into that moon, into that midnight, into that shadow, bring the inner wealth out. Transformation. This is the card of transformation. I feel like the red circles at the top and the bottom represent sunset and sunrise. And um, the moon is our deep subconscious level of our being and the overall energy of this reading. Um, and it springs an urge for external expression. From it springs an urge for external expression. And in the center of this card, we see a cross and a lotus that unfolds and blooms. We see the radiant shades of a new dawn, the dawn of a new day. And the six discs have six planetary symbols representing the internal process that leads to delivering harmony, luck, and success. And I'm actually going to read from the um, Mirror of the Soul, which is an expansion upon the Crowley deck, what these, how these planets um, help us and support us right now. So Saturn, how they bring us success. 
Success comes to those who go carefully, step by step, examining and scrutinizing everything. Above all, the beginning and end of an enterprise must be planned and thought out to the last detail. And then Jupiter comes along. And remember, we're having a Saturn-Jupiter square just a little bit later, mid-August, after the um, full moon in Aquarius. Jupiter tells us it is much too trying and boring to go step by step through every phase of a process. Be open also to taking risks. Be open for wonderful surprises and sudden changes or expansion. And this demands flexibility and openness to new, unexpected developments. Venus. Success also involves strong emotional energy. Only if you're open to the deep dimensions of feeling will you be able to fully enjoy the happiness of success. The moon. Success must grow out of those inner depths and bring something from these depths into view. Mercury. Success demands effective communication. Ideas must be expressed in ways that touch people and inspire them. And Mars tells us that success is achieved through enterprise, vitality, goal-directed energy, and endurance. Difficulties must be struggled through to victory. And our affirmation, be open to your own success. And I want to invite you now more than ever to practice gratitude at least every night and every morning. Real success comes through serving with love and compassion. Ask yourself, what does success look like to me? Another affirmation, my self-acceptance and self-confidence are the keys to real success. This brings us to the night card, the energies coming to us from the outside. I'm sorry, this is our hopes and fears. The last card was the energy coming to us from the outside world. This card in the ninth position represents our hopes and fears. And look at the similarity. Remember I said we're juggling, dancing between challenging energies and the answer, but it's like, double impact. It's five and 10 of wands. In both cards, we see the, the energy in the background being suppressed and oppressed. 10 of wands is oppression by these two, in this case, forward wands. So this card represents repressed feelings, energy held back, resulting in an explosion, isolation, or aggression. So if we're not willing to go into those inner realms and feel the feels and move through them, there could be a lot of chaos and violence happening in our world. But stillness and peace are always accessible through the portal in your own heart. The vital energy of those eight wands in the background are repressed by the two strong wands in the front. This card in the position of our hopes and fears is asking us literally once for all to release the fears that have held us back. These two central wands represent the fears of rejection, fears of rejection, acceptance, love, disapproval, or punishment. And remember, we have the answer right here. The energy furthering us right now is the power to be free from our fear and to transform our fear into love. So these energies, this oppression represses your own individualism, creativity, and your birthright to optimal health and wealth. Wealth overflowing. Remember, wealth is nothing if we can't share it. And wealth overflowing is the answer to so many problems in our greed-based society. So if you remain isolated and try to hide your feelings, they can turn inward and manifest as physical, emotional, spiritual, and mental imbalance, and then result in disease. 
but by taking all of the advice and all of these cards and the energy of this Lionsgate portal and the full buck moon, I forgot to tell you that these cards were actually drawn in the energy of the full blue buck moon and Capricorn. Um, while Pluto was in Aquarius and Saturn was square and Saturn square Jupiter is coming. These energies are all here to catalyze our collective transformation and transition to the new aeon or new earth timelines. Remember that was all represented very clearly by the queen of swords. We're in a great transition. Ask yourself, are there things you have always wanted to say? To whom? Take this opportunity to say it now. Make a phone call, write a letter. If they're no longer with us in this body, talk to their spirit. Affirmation, I stand alone without fear and I express myself freely. Which brings us, we're getting there to the final card. Well, we have also the underlying energy, but the card in the, in the outcome position is this beautiful and incredible chariot, um, which is the sign of cancer representing new beginnings, of course, and change for the greater good. Introspection. This chariot is poised for swift action. The driver sits in meditation in a chariot that has not yet begun to move. He's clothed in golden armor. Look how radiant that armor is. It's as if she painted with 14 karat gold. He's meditating on the Holy Grail, which contains the nectar of the stars. And this uh, shield represents also the wheel of fortune. He examines all possible consequences, Saturn, before setting his chariot in motion. For once he begins, there is no turning back. Meditate, dear one. Get clear on what the life of your dreams looks like and feels like. Be the master of the next new beginning in your life and collectively. Take some time to do your groundwork or your homework. And then start without delay. A most favorable outcome is just about guaranteed. The golden shield is cast with 10 crystals. The shield provides shelter for the inner transformation that you're about to go through or that you're already undertaking. Think also of turtle, great sea turtle energy, that shell protecting and nourishing you during your tender time of transformation. Um, the crystals allow for the development of the clarity needed to move forward. This new start leaves behind boring drudgery of day-to-day -day tasks that fail to fulfill and makes way for innovative Pluto ideas, Aquarius, inspiration, Allow a variety of activity to enrich, nourish, and stimulate you. It's summer. There's plenty of things to do. Get out there. Come up to the Laurel Highlands for the weekend. Get on the river. There's no greater way to be in the present moment than to be on the water, especially white water. Um, the regal path on which this chariot sits is paved with golden stones and is traveled by every spiritual seeker in search of that self-realization and inner transformation. Ask yourself, what areas of your life will you be changing? Are you ready to release the old to make way for the new? Create for yourself a loving, nurturing environment for your own transformation. Create a sacred space. Affirmations. I am a powerful creator here to accomplish something only I can contribute to society. I am needed. I am loved. I am internally and externally rich. 
And now the reason I'm bringing the underlying deck into the reading, I don't always do this. The, the bottom of the deck, which is the underlying energy, happens to be the significator. We talked about that briefly. When I shuffled and drew the cards on the Capricorn full buff moon, I identified the significator as the card which represents Capricorn, which is the devil. And this card brings in at the end here, the entirely masculine. You don't have to uh, be too imaginative to see the phallic energy here in the devil card. Um, in Hebrew, it's the letter Ayin, A-Y-N, which is the I. And you see the third eye there of the goat or the sea goat, which, which is um, the sign of Capricorn. This card represents creativity in its most material form. Capricorn occupies the zenith or the highest place achievable, usually by a celestial body. But it also represents the, the, the goat, the sea goat, and the god Pan leaping with lust on the summits of the earth. It's ruled by Saturn. And remember, why wouldn't we leap with lust on the summits of the earth? We're here to experience joy in these elemental bodies. This card, Pan, Pan here is the Pan genitor, the creator of all. And the ability to completely appreciate all things. Can you appreciate the barren as well as the lush? The tr this is a tree, the trunk of a tree that we see behind the goat here. And the ring around the top is actually another uh, show here of the goddess Nui. And it shows the tree penetrating the heavens. And its roots with the caduceus in the center there piercing the underworld, demonstrating the unity, oneness, an intricate web of life itself I see here in these figures in the background. Above all, this card represents finding ecstasy in all, in every phenomenon. Can we allow the male creative energy to fertilize our entirely feminine energy of this reading and thus create the equilibrium needed to return to harmony, bliss, power fueled by love, empowerment, not grief, power fueled by love. Procreative energy, new vitality, laughter, sensuality, immersion in the elements, sexuality, and individuality. To understand the truth of the devil, who is the most misunderstood archetype in all history by design. To understand the devil, you must free yourself of all conventional moral ideologies and dogma. Are you willing to do so, dear one? That is all that stands between you and the new aeon. It is you and I, actually. This, this may as well be you and I, because it is you and I that connects the energy of heaven and earth. It is you and I that is the expression of the love of mother, father, God, heaven and earth. We have been taught to demonize. What does that bring up for you? Ask yourself. Again, this is a different little bit of a twist on a question we already asked, but it's an important one. Do you have some wish or desire that you haven't yet admitted to? Perhaps you were ashamed. You thought you weren't worthy. I'm going to um, read a short meditation. If you would, go ahead and close your eyes. Take a deep breath in. Focus on your breath, just simply noticing it. 
Imagine that with every out breath, a root grows from the base of your spine deep into the center of the earth. This will happen quickly. And now feel that with every in breath, earth energy flows into you. It fills you. It fills your entire body. Perhaps you feel, see a color, a sensation, or the expansion of your heart center. And now let your awareness go to the crown of your head. Open yourself and with your next in-breath, allow the yellow gold cosmic energy to flow into you, filling your whole body and mixing the cosmic energy with the earth energy. Just sit in this energy as I share with you the final affirmations of the reading. I am the master of my life. I am blessed. I speak and the universe conspires to deliver what I ask. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for staying with me to the end. Please help us to grow by liking the video, share the video with someone that it would benefit, and please subscribe to our channel. You'll find many links in the description box below. You can download the New Moon and Lionsgate Portal Meditation Guide. You can Join the New Moon Global Goddess Gathering and be with us each and every new moon to set intentions and lift one another up. And also um, the uh, Reimagine Fayette County links. Okay, thank you again and bye for now.